what is the connection between El Nino and what's happening with Antarctic ice sheets? Hello, friends. Jim here. In an article appearing on the online publication EOS, El Nino may have kicked off Thwaites Glacier Retreat. Antarctic so-called Doomsday Glacier started losing mass mid-century around the same time as its neighboring glacier. An unusual El Nino event may have jump-started the retreat of the Thwaites Glacier, shown here. Antarctica's Thwaites Glacier is currently losing significant mass, contributing to around 4% of all global sea level rise. 4%. New research suggests that the start of Thwaites' current retreat aligns with that of the nearby Pine Island Glacier, which is also losing mass rapidly. The findings published in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the USA indicate that the mass loss was more likely spurred by regional conditions such as an El Nino event rather than dynamics unique to the glaciers themselves. Thwaites and its neighbor, the Pine Island Glacier, are part of the West Antarctica Ice Sheet, the area of the continental ice sheet that is retreating most quickly. If Thwaites continues to retreat at current rates, it will contribute 7 centimeters to global sea level rise by 2100 and has been nicknamed the Doomsday uh, Glacier. Scientists have observed accelerating ice loss from Thwaites since the 70s, mostly via satellite uh, imaging and data. Satellite data isn't really enough of a record to understand other factors controlling such a system. Understanding the glacier's pre-satellite pass helps scientists know what the ice is capable of. And the researcher of making these comments um, is Dr. Julia Wellner, associated with the Department of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences at the University of Houston in Houston, Texas. So she was basically saying that understanding the glacier's pre-satellite past helps scientists know what the ice is capable of, how fast can it really change, what are the mechanisms that drive such changes. In the new study, researchers used marine sediment cores collected from near the Thwaites Glacier in 2019. The sediment was dated using uh, lead-210, a radioactive isotope present in the ocean and binds to sediments as it settles onto the sea floor. The ratio of lead 210 in sediments compared to its radiogenic daughter products can tell scientists when the sediment was deposited. The cores also showed a visible transition from sediment deposited beneath a glacier to marine sediment, marking when the glacier retreated from its foothold on the ocean floor. The analysis is amazing quality scientific works that David Holland, a physical climate scientist at uh, New York University, not involved. The analysis show that Thwaites likely began to retreat around the 1940s, coinciding with the beginning of a retreat phase at neighboring Pine Island Glacier that had been determined by previous research. The results are in line with evidence provided by a series of parallel ridges in the ocean, excuse me, in the sea floor near Thwaites, which researchers say indicates a period of rapid retreat that likely occurred in the 1940s. Evidence that both glaciers began retreating around the same time indicates that the glacial mass loss is driven not by factors unique to the glaciers themselves, such as their shape, their structure, the the internal, you know, plumbing, you know, the shape of the ice, any fresh water movement inside, lubrication on the 
on the bedrock, but by external factors such as region-wide shifts in climate. In particular, a prolonged El Nino that occurred from 1939 to 1942 could have spurred the retreat of both glaciers, according to the authors. El Nino events tend to bring warmer than average temperatures to the Southern Ocean and cause warm water to flow onto the continental shelf upon which the Thwaites Glacier sits, according to the authors. The radiocarbon dating done by the researchers show that the edge of the Thwaites Glacier was near its current position around 9,400 years ago and was relatively stable until modern retreats started around the 1940s. Okay, so almost 10,000 years ago it was fine, and then in the last basically 80 years we start getting movement. I wonder what could have changed that. The study implies that even a short-term change in regional climate, such as the 1940s El Nino, can cause long-term glacial retreat, said uh, co-author James Smith, a marine geologist at BAS, British Antarctic uh, Survey. It makes perfect sense that an El Nino event would kick off the retreat. Distant changes in the tropics, such as an event in the and so weather phenomenon can create wind patterns, ocean conditions near Thwaites that would lead to glacial retreat. Why the glaciers did not quickly recover from the 1940s perturbations is an open question, according to Wellner. She hypothesized that multiple destabilizing factors in addition to an El Nino event could have combined to weaken the glacier. Additionally, both Thwaites and Pine Island glaciers are grounded in very deep water, meaning that once their footholds are lost, it's very difficult for them to gain back any lost mass. Once the system is kicked out of balance, the retreat is ongoing. The tribune has started a glacial retreat to the 1940s El Nino event to other causes, such as human-caused climate change, is a task for future analysis, said Wellner. Because we know these two glaciers are retreating in conjunction with each other, we are looking for external drivers, and the external drivers that happen around the right time are increased anthropogenic warming. So, we know that El Nino causes changes in the oceanic and atmospheric conditions, cyclical. But we also know that there's a high ocean heat content. As I di discussed in a prior video, you know, something like a 40 minute video or so, I showed the relationship between ocean heat, uh, you know, in the Pacific and, and in the ocean, how ocean heat from equatorial Pacific Ocean makes its way to the Southern Ocean adversely impacting the glaciers. So you may want to check that out. And what are we coming off of right now? We're coming off of, in the middle of actually, uh, a, a rather strong El Nino. What do we see this past winter? You know, in Antarctica was seen during their uh, you were seeing massive, massive ice loss. And we saw massive, you know, during what's their summer, we saw massive ice loss. And they should be moving into their winter and they're still seeing ice loss. Now, granted, I'm discussing sea ice at the moment, but if you lose the sea ice, there's nothing to hold back the land ice making it easier for the land ice to break off and melt once exposed to the warm oceanic waters. So this is interesting. We have information dating back to the 1940s that Thwaites and Pine Island started retreating. So there you have it. Thank you for your time. We'll talk soon.